Lego, try not to let recency bias affect the way you make videos challenge impossible. I get it, I know. You could say, where was all the conversation about these guys being bad earlier in the season? You were harping on these guys like crazy, Lego. What are you gonna go out there and do, make a video talking about how they're good now? Are you serious? And... That's the thing, you know, 82 game season, there's a lot of time for adjustment and players to improve or get worse or whatever. The Vancouver Canucks have not necessarily been the best team as of late. They've lost a few here and there. They've won a few here and there too. Regulation loss to the New York Rangers, regulation win against the New York Islanders. You see the team doing the things that they're doing and... It's not all too surprising. I mean, the Vancouver Canucks are not a particularly great team on paper. Rick Tockett, walk it like I talk it, coming in here is not going to go out there and fix the team, quote unquote, and make them a legit playoff contender when taking over the same roster that Bruce and Travis Green had pretty much. But at the end of the day, when it comes to the two guys that we're going to be talking about in this video here today, I just wanted to start things off by saying I'm impressed. Like, really, I am very impressed with what we're seeing out of J.T. Miller, Vancouver Canucks' recent signee in the offseason, as well as what we have seen out of Brock Besser, Vancouver Canucks' recent signee in the offseason. Yeah, they're both guys with contracts that are arguably either too long or too expensive, but these two Americans have gone out there in the past few games and have done so well that I feel like I just had to make a video about it. The thing with Vancouver and these guys in particular is that we've always known that Miller and Besser are both talented players. Miller got 99 points last year. Brock was that American sniper all those years ago. Unfortunately, this season, in a year where everything was supposed to sort of continue in the same way, Miller was supposed to be a point-per-game stud, and Brock said himself he was going to hit 30 goals. We hadn't really seen too much of that for the majority of the year. However, in the past few games worth of play, we've had ourselves some really good just sort of movement and swagger out of both of these guys that it's almost a night and day difference between how these guys have been playing recently and how they were playing, let's say, at the start of the year. JT Miller kicked off the 2022-2023 season with, what is that, three points in his first six games played, a half point a game pace when the Canucks were losing all those games under Boudreaux, everybody was complaining about Miller and his turnovers, the back check and all this crap with him and his attitude and yelling at players and everything. It was a really big deal, and for the most part, Miller was seen as the biggest scapegoat out of them all as to why the Vancouver Canucks could not close out games and could not get results. Miller wasn't producing, he was actually playing pretty poorly, and the Canucks were losing, not as a direct result of that, but his play was sort of influencing a lot of these games, and you immediately started to see the sentiment saying, oh, it was a mistake to re-sign this guy, what are you doing? He's at half a point a game, he's not even playing like a 99-point caliber player. But recently, I feel like JT Miller has really taken a big step up under Rick Tockett. It's almost like the difference in personality between the two coaches has really affected the way that Miller himself has approached the game and reacted to the game, how he sees his teammates and the plays in front of him developing, because I don't know what it is, but right now Miller just seems a lot more calm. He's a lot less hot-headed, as Petey went out there and said on the interview with 32 Thoughts a few days ago during the All-Star break. Miller is just a lot more composed, and he's making proper reads. Sure, he maybe has one two bad turnovers a game, but it's a lot better than it had been at the very beginning of the year. And for the most part, I mean, in his last 10 games, JT Miller has, guess what, 10 points. In his last five games, he's got five points. He's up to 47 points in 52 games played this year on pace for 74 points, which, as we had talked about in yesterday's video, that's not bad for a guy making $8 million a year till the end of 2030. Now, of course, He's gonna be really old when that contract expires. He's 29 right now, he is in the midst of his prime, but just overall, when it comes to the beginning of the season versus now, there's been significant improvement, and I feel like a lot of the Canucks discourse that I've seen, or not the Canucks themselves, but like Canucks fan discourse at the very least, has really started to take notice that Miller has been a lot better the past little while here. Sure, is the contract maybe a bit too long? Yeah, it probably is, but... 
at the very least. Play like we're seeing out of Miller right now makes it a lot easier to stomach when you think about that contract being so long, rather than the Miller that we had seen at the beginning of the year when he was just yelling at everybody, making way too many turnovers, not producing points, and the Canucks were just being bad as a result. Sure, I guess you could say that Miller on the PK nowadays is not really doing all too much better. The game against New Jersey comes to mind where he was just kind of standing there in the overtime, but you see the game against New York yesterday, the guy was blocking shots and making the dedicated plays, and he shook it off like a soldier going out there and just doing his duty. Miller has been a bit better, but it's not even really just him, because Brock Besser is up to 10 points in his last 10 games and 7 points in his last 5. One goal, 6 assists in his previous 5 games played, and Besser is on pace for 59 total points in 74 games. He's got 35 in 44 games right now. This would be technically a career year if Besser were to continue the point production pace that he is at, but you wouldn't really think about it like that if you just listened to what a lot of Canucks fans were saying about this guy. Now, I'm certainly guilty about this too. I talked about how there were many conversations with me and my friends, people in my real world circle that would always revolve around Besser and how he's slow and how he's this and that and not good anymore. But the thing is, I gotta go out there and give him props because the past few games, he's really looked like a much more confident and more offensively potent playmaker version of Brock Besser. Sure, we always wonder about the rookie sniping ability that he had. And for the most part, we're seeing some goals from Brock Besser. He maybe gets a goal every few games or so, and not every goal that he scores is like that beautiful snipe that he was able to do consistently in 2017, 2018. But it's everywhere else that I've been so impressed by with Brock. Sure, is $6.6 million a season still kind of expensive? Yeah, I'll go out there and agree with that. But... The past few games have shown sort of a different side to Brock. He's a lot more creative offensively. He's a lot more just efficient with his passes on the boards and his plays towards the goal. And when you combine this free-flowing state of mind that Brock has seemed to unlock the past few days, you see games like yesterday where the guy goes out there and gets a goal and two assists, or a goal and three assists, or whatever it was. I mean, this is a pretty talented player, all things considered, that might just be getting a little bit too much money. And as a result, games like yesterday, where he really boosts his trade value, these are the types of games that we like to see, now don't we? It all comes together as well when you acknowledge that on the Canucks power play, you're seeing a lot more movement. It's not just Miller on the left, Petey on the right, and Hughes up top. It's everybody kind of just rotating around and cycling and free-flowingly moving from place to place. And it ends up creating plays that are a lot more creative. And you see Brock Besser, who is at the point instead of in the front of the net taking a long shot only for it to get tipped in by Anthony Bavillier. It's a really nice set of complementary factors that the Canucks have had the past little while here, and I kind of wanted to make this video just to make props and acknowledge that that has been the case. So, you can leave me your thoughts in the comment section below. What are your opinions about the Vancouver Canucks and how they've been performing recently? What are your thoughts about the sort of new gear that we're seeing in front of our eyes on the power play with these players and the strategies that they're displaying, and how these tendencies have carried over into their regular 5v5 play? Miller is a lot more of a leader now, at least that's what it looks like. Brock Besser is a lot more of a playmaker now, and he's a lot more confident too. Thoughts in the comment section below about the Vancouver Canucks and these American forwards. I hope you enjoyed this Vitaage Rolls 99. And bye.